Elisa Star, Elisa Star, Rubber mouth, breathtaking, so bizarre. Elisa Star, Elisa Star, she's your friend. Hi, welcome to another episode of Elisa's Favorite Boyfriend Television. Today we're going to talk about the Windsors in honor of Prince Philip's death. Um, I have been posting all over. Okay, so first I wanted to tell you my favorite new thing that I learned about the royal family because Prince Philip died is that they are cousin fuckers, which I knew. I knew that the royal family in Europe had been cousin fucking for the last 500 years, but I didn't realize that Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth were still cousins. And so I started going on a lot of, um... English uh, news uh, sites, not not the sites themselves, but whenever one is shared on Twitter, I'll go to the comment section and be like, yep, uh, those cousin fuckers, yep, they sure had a beautiful marriage. Also, England should give back Africa's gold. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, and then, you know, someone inevitably is like, they're only third cousins. And in my head, I'm like, okay, um, cousin fucker's a cousin fucker. And even third removed, they're going to have some aunts and uncles and cousin and in common. And that's just fucking creepy, dude. Like, and, you know, a couple of different times somebody was like, oh, just like you don't have cousin fuckers in your country or even sister brother fuckers. And I was like, no, you're totally right. And ours are racist too, just like your royalty. They're cousin fucking racist and so are ours. So maybe all the cousin fuckers all over the world are racist. Maybe that's a thing. And if you think about it, a cousin fucker is somebody who is like, I don't want to fuck anyone even a little bit different from me which you know is could be seen as racist or at the very least um uh uh some kind of ist against anyone who's not in your family i guess like it's just it's just a little bit like our bloodline is so great that we want to only keep it in the family, which is something that my sister and I used to say in high school because we thought it was hilarious. If you can't keep it in your pants, keep it in the family. So yeah, uh, (laughs) I have been using the cousin fucking as a way of getting attention. And then I've been trying to convince England, not convince them. I mean, I'm not going to convince them myself, but I just want people to think about the fact that Reparations could start with something simple, like giving a country back the gold you stole. Country. Africa is not a country. A continent back the gold you stole. So, um, (laughs) yeah, it's cool because nobody ever addresses the racism. Although somebody did call me uh, from the woke generation, and I am... 15 years older than the woke generation. I am not one of those guys. I just think, you know, equality. Cool. So back to the Windsors. The Windsors is a television show which highlighted some of the most hilarious slash awful things about the royal family. And, you know, I did spend some time in England. Not very much, though. Like a couple months, right? Um, I was mostly in Ireland, and even then, just a couple months, right? So, but I did see (laughs) in the English papers how many times Harry has dressed up like a Nazi, which is um, a running gag in the Windsor family where somebody is like, oh, no, Harry, that's a picture of Harry dressed as a Nazi again. And they're like, wait, which one? And then they go through like 50 of them. (laughs) Like, that was a real thing that he did over and over again for parties. He was also found naked and taped to a pole once. Um, Those royals get up to some fucked up shit. But The Windsors is a nonstop comedy about how idiotic the royal family is. And one of my favorite parts of it is that William, heir to the crown William, in the in the in the TV show, is constantly having this like existential dilemma where he's like, but what do we as royals do? Do we have jobs? Shouldn't we have jobs? How can we justify robbing the public the way we do? 
Like, he's in every episode, he's having this crisis, which is amazing because I don't think in real life they're actually having that. But um, it is really nice for him to try and search for purpose in his life. There are a lot of, you know, child molesting jokes around Andrew because he is a child molester. He's um, Charles's brother, not heir to the throne. So he can he can afford to be a child molester. And every time I've pointed to him as proof that Queen Elizabeth and Philip are cousin fuckers, I'm like, how else do you explain Andrew? Nobody has fought me on that point. So um, the Windsors is just like, it just sort of like exaggerates things we already know about the royal family. So if you follow them at all, you will find it amazing. And, you know, it makes fun so, fun of Beatrice and Eugenie. Um, it makes fun of Meghan Markle, but not really in a racist way. It just makes fun of like her California hippiness compared to, you know, like the way that the English see Americans. They see us obsessed with like health food and yoga and just being obnoxious about that kind of shit, which, you know, nice, nice that it's not a racist stereotype. That's awesome. So, um, there's a lot of jokes about Harry uh, being too dumb to read, which I thought was hilarious, too, because, <laughs> I mean, we don't know. <laughs> and, I mean, I don't think that there's anything that says that they have to be able to read in order to be royalty. <laughs> like, like, what job do they have that, you know, they cut ribbons. That's That's their whole deal. They cut ribbons and they spend millions of pounds of the British people's money on heating their castles. That's it. Um, so I I loved it. I fucking loved it. But the the and like I said, slightly exaggerated stories from the English press about the royal family. And uh Prince Philip just randomly sends super racist letters that they read before they celebrate an event. He you know, he doesn't appear in person. Um, and they don't really have the queen show up for anything either. They don't really make fun of Elizabeth and Philip directly, but definitely uh, they highlight his racism. And it like it's funny because they just think it's like sweet, sweet old granddad sent us a racist letter again that we just have to read before we can like get fucked up. Um, which you know, racism isn't adorable, but it is nice to see them kind of reflect. Philip and Elizabeth's racist policies. Like I said, like they, Africa recently asked for its gold back and the Royal family was like, Nope, we're going to keep it in our museums and our coffers. That's where it belongs. So I, I fucking loved it. I thought it was so funny. I tried to show my sister who has also been to England, but she wasn't there long enough. I don't think. And it's not her thing to really read papers or listen to the news. Like, no matter where I am, I'm obsessed with the news. And she's never been one obsessed with the news. Like, it's kind of fun because when I talk to her, I get to tell her stories that, you know, sound crazy if you're not listening to the news every day. Um, and she would always be like, wait, what happened? So that was a fun game we played where I would just get to be like her, you know, Stephen Colbert or whatever. Okay, so the Windsor's hilarious, totally worth watching. You do end up learning kind of like what they're all up to. And Charles and Camilla, Camilla have this like intensely dark s &M relationship, but they're also both obsessed with power. And when they get to be queen and king and when they get to rule the country, even though they're ancient and probably will never, you know, <laughs> the queen mother will never die. <laughs> Charles is always seen as like the scheming uh, idiot, you know, and Camilla is the is the intelligent force behind everything that goes on. It's it's delightful. And I always felt like it was more of a documentary than a comedy. So that's what I derived that and the fact that the colonizing racist policies that were set in place a long time ago are still held in place today in England and in America. You know, we're racist too. And when that was pointed out to me, I agreed. I was like, yeah, 
I'm looking for reparations for every fucking person. That's that's not just me asking England to consider reparations to the continent of Africa. It's also the American taxpayers paying reparations to black people. We all know that because they were enslaved um, and because they were then discriminated against and, um, and paid low wages, like we've been stealing their money and labor for hundreds of years. That's why they can't create wealth or stability for themselves or their communities because we still steal their labor and their, and their money by not paying them enough, um, by ghettoizing them, uh, by not allowing them to buy property, which is the one way in America that you can make money, that you can make generational wealth. You know, like my parents bought a house and then they were able to sell that house and buy two houses, you know, 20 years later. But in a black community, since they're not provided with housing loans, they're discriminated against at the banks. They can't do that kind of thing. They have to rent forever. They can't pass anything down to their children. So I want us to provide reparations to the black communities here in the form of money and in the form of loans, in the form of everything, representation in um, in Congress and in our local governments. I just think that we owe black Americans a debt they built our country and we've never paid them for that labor so uh, you know same same England right and not just black Americans Indian Americans Chinese Americans I mean Chinese Americans built our entire fucking railroad a railroad we still use today across the United States we've never compensated them for that it was like if you lived through it you got to be alive it's not like they were making any money. They were pretty much slaves too. So I just I just want us all to be conscious of that shit when we're watching any kind of English news about the crown. I I myself will never watch the crown because the Windsors already told me everything I need to know about that family. The Windsors and the papers, which I think we've been able to prove in the press um, the, the, ironically, the the palace and the papers are, are intimately connected. Papers do what the palace asks in order to have continued access, just like they do with politicians here in the United States. It it's a cycle. That's how they maintain power. And watching William question that power and question the use of that power in the Windsors makes me feel like somebody in England is actually thinking about the repercussions of carrying this inbred family on their shoulders forever. <laughs> like <laughs> they don't do anything. Why are you guys giving them millions of pounds? Couldn't you guys use some, some, you know, I've heard that your national health care system isn't so great right now. I'm sure you could use it there, you know, and the queen could just keep one castle. She doesn't need 10, right? You can defend one fucking camp castle. It just doesn't make sense for all those people to be operating all those castles when she She's only one person. There are only like 20 people in that family. There's no justification for keeping 20 people in 10 different castles. So as <laughs> as you can see, I feel very strongly about the royals and that show the Windsors justified all of my class resentment. So if you too have class resentment and have followed any of the royal stories... Um, you are going to find it a delight. I did show it to my sister. She did not get it at all. She was like angry bored. She was like, what the fuck is this? You know, and I noticed I was laughing. She was not. She was like, I don't, I don't, I just don't get any of this. And I was like, wait, don't, don't you remember when Harry was found naked? And she was like, no, I don't even know who that is. And I remember when William was the hot dish before he went bald. I remember girls of my generation, I'm 42, um, 
thought William was our prince, right? I mean, I didn't, but I, you know, and I also, I don't care for gingers. They're not my sexual type, really. I know that's a little bit racist against orange people. I'm sorry. They're white. I feel justified. Um, it's, it's not even that I don't like gingers. It's just that I don't want to have sex with them. So I never got into Harry. He's also a little young for me. You know, he's like 10 years younger than me. Um, and we were sexualizing William when Harry was a teenager and William was a young adult. And I just didn't want to like pedophile my way through my young adulthood. So I, I'd never found either one of them hot. I just thought that they were amusing, you know, and, and I was like, all right, you know, for, for an inbred, you are very attractive. Um, about William, but one of the other long standing jokes is that Princess Diana was rumored to have had an affair with one of her bodyguards who was a ginger and looks almost exactly like Harry. And so, not an inbred, far more gorgeous than his brother. Um, and there are a lot of jokes in, in the Windsors about Harry <laughs> just always saying, he's like, Oh, wouldn't it be so hard if your parentage was questioned? <laughs> like, oh, Harry. Um, yeah, and it just it just makes such a difference when somebody is not... I mean, I'm just saying, like, you know, Diana was definitely outside of their gene pool. But the, the uh, you know, so William's not as inbred. But just the fact that Harry probably isn't part of the lineage of the royal family just makes him that much more of a catch, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because there's no cousin fucking in his, in his, in his bloodline. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I still think it's hilarious that the royal family are still cousin fuckers. And okay. People are like, Oh my God, but it was a hundred years ago. And I'm like, no, it was, 80 years ago, right? 60 years, no, 80. So they got married in the 40s. I know over here in the 40s, cousin fucking was still, was pretty taboo by then, right? I'm guessing that peasants weren't doing it in the 40s, right? So why was the royal family still into cousin fucking? I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't understand why Queen Elizabeth thought that this was her only choice. Maybe it was her only choice. Maybe her mom and dad were like, no, you're going to cousin fuck or you're going to have to Queen Elizabeth the first this shit. Yeah. Spinsterhood for you, bitch. But I don't think they would have let her be a spinster because her loins had to produce the next prince. I just don't think that they, how could they have thought it through if her loins were going to produce the next prince, but they were compromised by the entire genetic makeup of her whole family. Okay. All right. I'm not going to be able to think myself through the cousin fucking. It's just racism is actually a much easier topic to talk about. <laughs> so this has been a review. Oh, one extra thing. Uh, the Windsors and most of British television does not address racial inequality. Uh, so if you're looking for that in a TV show, that's not here. Classism? Yes. Um, racism? No, they don't really cover that at all. Even the Megan jokes, like I said, they, they stay away from her blackness and they pretty much just object to her Californianness. So um, if you're looking for that, that kind of social justice in a comedy, you're not going to find it here. But um, And sometimes I enjoy uh, the class struggle of England, um, you know, because I can see similar class struggles here. They, you know, without like the racism in our, in our classism here in America distracts people from the actual classism. It distracts people from the fact that, you know, Jeff Bezos makes a hundred million dollars a year or something, hundred billion dollars, $2.1 billion a year. And, cannot figure out how to pay his workers a living wage, even though it wouldn't bite into his personal wealth at all. He would not notice if he gave all of his workers a living wage. Um, he prefers to enslave them, right? And 
that kind of classism, like I said, uh, is like we, the industrial leaders who create that kind of class divide, right? Because he's as a billionaire, um, he could make things more equal, but instead he's making things much more unequal and creating class divides and preventing people from working their way out of poverty. So I think that racism is a distraction tool for a lot of these industry leaders. I think that they point at that, they point at, you know, black workers versus white workers um, and hiring practices and the racism that is still embedded in our system has to be addressed, but the classism is what's killing everyone. Um, well, racism kills everyone too, because you have white mediocrity ruling over any kind of minority excellence, right? You have a lot of white guys who fall up. You have a lot of um, black men and women, people of color, who are far more qualified um, not moving ahead at all. So, yes, racism fucks everyone up the same way classism fucks everyone up. Um, but without the addressing of racism, which England just doesn't do. I mean, there are a few cop shows where they sort of do a little bit, but for the most part, in their comedies and their dramas, they never really touch on it. And I think it allows me to just see the pure classism, um, even though I know that that's their way of denying that they still have problems. So, and I mean, that's my white privilege speaking, not wanting to combine the two or wishing that racism wasn't intertwined with classism. I know that I'm, I'm working on it. Um, but like I said, like that's, that's something that clarifies the two issues for me when I get to watch the English do that, because that is still their struggle politically there. You know, the, the Tories versus the labor movement is, Tories are rich people and the labor movement is the workforce, right? And and that's how people vote um, across England. So, yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to get, uh, I didn't mean to get off topic like that, but, you know, my mind wanders. I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, Elise's favorite boyfriend television. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.